Each week, thousands of migrants arrive and travel through Europe, seeking a better life. Some unfortunately die or disappear on the way. Some lose contact with their loved ones. And back at home, families wonder if their brothers or sons are dead or alive. The Red Cross and Red Crescent movement tries to help restore these broken family links. Each year, several Red Cross national societies, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies meet to discuss on how to respond in the best way to this humanitarian issue. On se retrouve avec des familles de personnes qui ont disparu, qui ne donnent plus de nouvelles. Plusieurs euh, possibilités seront offertes. La personne peut être détenue et incapable de communiquer avec ses parents. La personne peut être morte, noyée. La personne peut être soignée inconsciente dans un hôpital. La personne peut aussi vouloir, et c'est un droit, disparaître et ne pas vouloir contacter sa famille. Il peut y avoir des multiples, euh, des multiples raisons qui font que ce lien familial est interrompu. Et nous, notre travail, c'est de tout mettre en œuvre pour rétablir ce lien, que ce soit en offrant des services téléphoniques dans les prisons, quand ils sont absents, comme c'était le cas de Malte, jusqu'en janvier 2014, à Malte, aucun service téléphonique n'était offert aux détenus. Ces personnes arrivaient à Malte et étaient détenues jusqu'à des périodes allant jusqu'à deux ans. Pendant deux ans, la famille n'entend plus parler d'eux. Beaucoup font même le deuil des personnes. Voilà, et ça c'est un service que le CICR, grâce à une excellente collaboration avec la Croix-Rouge maltaise qui visite deux fois par semaine tous les centres de détention. C'est un service qu'on a réussi à mettre en place et qui fonctionne aujourd'hui. Just in 2015, we have just received more or less 17,000 people. 17,000 people arriving through the Mediterranean. Most of them arrive in Sicily. Someone else is able to seal in the way up to Brindisi, other part of Italy. The first question is, do you need anything? As soon as we are clear they are physically okay, et mentally ok, we start now to take care of the emotional part of the migrants, which is, do you need to contact the family? Honestly, most of these people have already organized themselves. They have mobile, they have the technology now helping them a lot. The only one that doesn't have the chances, they, it's important they know the service at disposal. As Red Cross, as we think we, we may have the chance to talk with 90, 85, 90% of the people that's arriving on the Italian coast, especially in Sicily. The scale of the Italian Red Cross's humanitarian activities has soared in line with the massive number of vulnerable migrants arriving, as is the case with other European Red Cross national societies in Greece, Spain, Malta and Bulgaria. As they were naturally not prepared to face a challenge of this dimension, the whole Red Cross and Red Crescent movement tries to help them. In 2015, the International Federation has allocated around 300,000 euros to both Greece and Italy from its Disaster Relief Emergency Fund. And last May, it also launched an appeal of about 2.7 million euros to assist the Italian Red Cross. The International Committee of the Red Cross has also engaged in helping certain national societies in their RFL, Restoring Family Links, programs. In general, the derniers services RLF tracing qui avait été offert par ces sociétés nationales pour des phénomènes de telle ampleur, parce qu'on parle quand même d'un flux de migrants assez énorme, on parle de 272 000 pour l'Italie l'an dernier. En général, ça remonte à la Seconde Guerre mondiale, donc l'expertise avait été un petit peu perdue, alors que le CICR, du fait de sa présence dans les conflits mondiaux, et certains européens, on peut parler des Balkans bien sûr, nous on a conservé cette expertise, on sait répondre à des phénomènes de masse. Donc le CICR essaye de concentrer toute cette expertise, de la porter, de la mettre au service des sociétés nationales, des pays d'accueil, de destination ou de transit, quand elles sont débordées dans des situations extrêmes comme celles qu'on vient de décrire en Italie. Ça a été aussi le cas en Grèce, à Athènes, en 2013, où le CICR a ouvert une antenne. In uh, October 2013, the ICRC opened in Athens an RFL antenna to support uh, the tracing service of the Hellenic Red Cross with regards to the migration file. The ICRC RFL antenna has initiated the three-minute phone calls on arrival uh, points when there is mass events. For example, we had an Eropetra in May, the arrival of more than 500 people that not everyone had access to, uh, com to communication because they, are, uh, they were retained by the police. And uh, we provided phone calls with the volunteers and the team that visited the place from Athens. Uh, statistics are not so important 
at this moment because you, first you cannot assess because people when first arrive, even if they are separated, they do not know they are separated. Uh, they think that uh, the relative will follow soon and it is important to have an RFL presence and the promotion of the service at that point because people may come to you a little later when people manage to move onward. You receive the tracing request saying that ah, in August 2014 we were in Lesbos and we were separated. And you can say, but we were in Lesbos, Where did, why didn't you come then? And they say, oh, we thought that we will meet each other in Athens, but we didn't. So we have these cases. For instance, if we, if we have a tracing case in, in Afghanistan, I mean, it's crucial that we can cooperate with the first with the International Committee of the Red Cross, but also with the Afghan Red Crescent Society, because we know that the Afghan Red Crescent Society is a national society actually carrying out the work in the field. So, I mean, it, we are so dependent on each other that we cannot carry out tracing work unless we can cooperate. And that has been so, for, of course, for many years. But it, it's really crucial and so important that we, can, that we can work together. And for instance, this meeting that we have here now, which, I mean, the annual, uh, let's say, the annual RFL meeting, which is a good opportunity to meet other, you know, other colleagues from, from other national societies. Uh, we can discuss all the different topics that can be, you know, from high and low, from details to big scopes. One topic that we have been discussing here is uh, tracing requests when the family is on the move somewhere in Europe. And that is very difficult cases for us because they might not be registered and they might, might, might as I said, be on the move. Um, so we have been discussing now, what, can, can we find better ways of improving the the, the result when we, when we search for these, uh, for these missing people. The incident in Lampedusa showed the rest of the world the people dying through the bodies. And the family started to be aware there was people dead. They started to contact us. I want to know if my brother, my sister was on that boat. Of course, we had to replay because we know that if you don't have any bodies, you do have family looking for someone. And of course, even this dispersal, unfortunately, may be under the sea, the family had the right to know. This is, I think, the next big challenge for the cross, especially at RFL. I mean, dealing with the authority in terms of dead body management. When you have a large number of bodies, it's all about the management of the data. When you compare the data that you have from a relative uh, when that person was alive, and then you compare that data with the data that you obtain from a dead body. Then when you compare this data, you try to see who this body was or you try to see this relative that the family is looking for could be perhaps one of these non-identified bodies. It's very difficult to go like from country to country, from morgue to morgue, uh, especially because the most affected locations are very small, very rural areas that perhaps do not have the best forensic um, practices. So because the information needs to, be, needs to be centralized and needs to be available. My role is basically to provide technical advice and assist those who are part of the process or those who would need to interact in between each other to, to be able to effectively find a missing person or give a name to a non-identified body.